Well, hey, YouTube. I got some requests to um, take a look at how I built this charger. So this is a video of it before I take it all back apart. Just a USB charger. I put a switch on it so the circuitry in the charger doesn't drain the battery. So you can just turn it on and off, you know. And, of course, this is the uh, whatever model. I don't know what it is. I don't follow their models. P118B, this is the uh, the little wall wart charger, and I didn't much care for it because I used the green ones or or the other one like it, <clears throat> like the job site style ones. So I made it into a USB charger instead. So here's a quick video about how I did it. All right, so I got the screws out. We're going to take it apart for you. One of the first things you're going to have to know if you want to get into this particular model charger yourself is that the screws are torques with that little security nub in the middle. So you're gonna need some goofy, uh, you'll need one of those security bit sets to get into it. Or a drill bit, whatever suits you. So, let's see if I can do this right-handed. <clears throat> so what I did, pardon my uh, throat clearing, so you get these USB chargers. That's the that's the guy itself right there. That's the charger that you plug the USBs into. See that? You get those on Amazon. I'll throw a link. I don't have any of that affiliate stuff. I'll just put a link in the description. It's the one I got. If I can find it or one like it. But basically what you need to care about is one that's rated from 12 to 24 volts input DC across its terminals. And as long as it's rated 12 to 24 volts input, some of them, uh, some commercial vehicles like uh, aircraft or uh, specifically a lot of uh, trucks, large trucks, will run 24 volt systems. And so they, you know, these have a regulator inside to take anything from, you know, its voltage range input, if it's specified 12 to 24 volts, and make uh, 5 volts USB, you know, come out the front, 5 volts DC for the USB charging or whatever it actually charges at. I, I've never metered it. So there's voltage regulation built into this, uh, and that's the key. you got to get one that's rated up to 24 volts input because, of course, these Ryobi batteries are 18 volts. And as you saw when I had the guy turned on, uh, you know, when they're charged, they're, they're closer to 20 or 20 and a half volts. So if you've ever taken this charger apart, the first thing you'll notice is it's missing half the circuit board. I, I jigsawed it right clean off, which sounds insane, but it's really not that big a deal. <clears throat> it's not very difficult either. That circuit board right there is loose. I actually put a little hot glue on it so it's easier to assemble. And you'll see that battery terminal right there. That's the red one. And uh, did I scrape it? You know what? I hot glued to where you can't see it, but anyways, before you smear hot glue all over it, it's real easy to read battery negative, battery positive, and it's also real easy to see it corresponds to the to the tang. So what I did was I cut the board off and then uh, I put a battery in it carefully to make sure there was no shorts. There wasn't and there shouldn't be because the leads are all just sliced off and nothing crossed over. Soldered my leads on. My particular USB charger came from Amazon with a fuse holder. I went ahead and retained that, even though the batteries have some built-in protection. So I, uh, you know, left that fuse in there. And, you know, the hot glue is just so it's a little bit more durable. <clears throat> so took the negative, straight, straight to the negative on the USB charger. Took the positive, left it through the fuse, a little more hot glue, just to make assembly easier. Soldered it up to a switch, which I bolted in place and put some more hot glue behind it. I like hot glue because it keeps things from vibrating around. You don't have to take them apart a year later. And then uh, soldered it up to that. So that's literally it. Uh, this, you know, USB charger just barely fit in here. <clears throat> On the uh, Ryobi charger, I had to nibble out this part of the molding right here uh, to give myself some room. And honestly, it's still just was almost too tight on that radius for that portion of it right there. I didn't realize this was aluminum. I started trying to scrape that out with a razor knife and it's aluminum, so I went about it another way. Some big washers, like some big nitrile or rubber washers, whatever they are. Uh, you can, there you go. You see the rubber washers underneath the, uh, the top of that USB charger just to space it out away so that it had enough room to clear when I close a little clamshell. 
So that's it. Pack of Slash, baby. You know, 10 or 12 bucks for this guy, and uh, it was an enjoyable hour. So to cut this hole, you know, for this and the plastic, I don't know the measurement. If you've gone this far, you should be able to figure that out yourself. I use one of these step drill bits because they're awesome, but you could really use a paddle bit or, uh, I don't know, you can gnaw it out with your teeth if you want. So that's that. I'm going to put it back together, and we'll call it done. So I got it all screwed back together. I couldn't hardly do it with one hand very easily, so I saved you the pain of watching me do that. So, you know, the only thing I would say is you are jigsawing a circuit board in half, which means you want to make sure on the bit of circuit board that's still in there that you haven't crossed over something. But the bottom line is there's only the two terminals, you know. There's only the two terminals inside here, the positive and the negative terminal. I clipped out that... Uh, that secondary one there that's negative. I really don't know what they have the third one for. So you want to make sure that um, there's no short between it. So you just do a visual inspection of the board. I didn't try throwing a meter on it, but that probably would have been a good idea. If you want to do that. Make sure you don't start fires. And uh, hey, rock and roll. Plus, I guess you got a nice little voltage meter for your batteries. That's it. If you got any questions, put them in the comments. Simple little project. Lots of guys have done things similar. Um, it's not a real hard thing to do. I would say, I don't think I would try to do it if you can't solder. Soldering is probably probably an important component of this project. It's quite a bit larger than a lot of the USB chargers you can go buy that are like, you know, almost pocket sized really, or, or maybe small enough for a small bag. This is definitely bigger than that. I mean, that's a four amp hour battery and that's my hand, so, you know. It's a little bit larger, but <clears throat> the benefit is if it's dead, grab another battery, which is kind of cool. All right, that's it. See you later.